Happy Mother's Day. I am just cleansing my Oracle decks. I'm doing the Moonology, both my Moonology, the original and the Manifestation decks. And I'm doing my Work Your Light deck and the Starseed Oracle deck. I thought for all of us moms, I'd pull some cards. cleansing energy of the cards and myself. All right. Let's start with the Moonology Manifestation Oracle cards. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing today, you're having a great day. Where I am, the sun is shining. It's that's the card. Okay. Ooh, nice. Last quarter moon in Cancer. Take a breather. Nice. All right. So the next one is work your light. Messages for the moms today. What do we need to hear or know? Perhaps go within about. There we go. Oh, boundaries and the crumbling. Interesting. All right, so this is the Minology deck now. You are good enough. Wow. Oh, so many moms need to hear that so many times. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. Oh, these cards are just so incredible some days. Every day, actually, every time I use them. <clears throat> Okay, and two are coming. What are the two? Big picture thinking and deep cellular he healing. Right. This is fun. Okay, let's start with the Moonology Manifestation. Take a breather. Oh, moms do need to hear this last quarter moon in Cancer. Sometimes situations start with much promise and then get fatigued or fizzled out. This is normal. If a situation is dragging on and everyone is becoming far too sensitive, it might be time to take a breather. Is this still what you want? If a situation is slipping away from you, it could be due to self-doubt or because too many people are trying to get their own way. If you're struggling to find balance with a VIP in your life or a personal or professional connection, it may be time to show your feelings. Interesting. Um, this could be a clash here caused by everyone wanting to be the leader, give the situation some air. Manifesting mindset, you need to stop and revive. Emotional fatigue is as dangerous as physical fatigue if it becomes long-term. That is so true. 
see the beauty in your life to refresh your heart. Okay, so if you're into crystals, um, these crystals work especially well for the sign of cancer. Amazonite, blue apatite. Oh, I have a blue apatite. It's really pretty. Um, rose quartz, I have that one too. Red, jade, moonstone, or jasper. Um, so you can hold it while you meditate, visual visualizing a glowing green light swirling around you. Um, alternatively, you can keep your crystal just close by you or put it on a crystal grid. The manifestation affirmation, love is all there is and I am love. Awesome. That's a great message. That's a great reminder for everyone. Take a breather and on it, like physically take a deep, deep, deep breath too. like breathe all the way down here. Not just shallow breathing where you're only kind of breathing like right here. You want to breathe all the way down. So work your light boundaries. Also really good for moms. Yeah. Boundaries 38. And when I say, you know, really good boundaries for moms, what I really mean is once you have kids, it's so easy to let those lines blur and you lose yourself. You need to keep the boundary of self-care, loving on yourself, doing things that you enjoy. Yes, when the kids are young, you don't get a lot of time, but make time for yourself. Make yourself a priority. That is the biggest, biggest, biggest boundary as a mom. Big. Let other people help you. That was one thing that I was like, it was hard for me to ask for help. And once I finally did, it's totally different. Like it, it takes a village and it's okay to ask for help. It's a hundred percent okay to ask for help. So boundaries, start with yourself. A lot of self-love, a lot of self-love. Yeah. If you think you need to do it all, if you think you need to control it all, that's your soul's trying to get a, get your attention in a very big way because you don't at all. You don't. So first boundaries, before I even read this, boundaries with yourself, big time. Okay. Um, where do you need to establish better boundaries? You're being called to create clear boundaries in your life. This could be with your friends, family, or work saying yes to what you really mean. Um, when you really mean no leads to resentment which is the biggest energy drain ever. At first it may might only be a little bit and not feel like a big deal, but before you know it, your energy field becomes porous and you're left feeling depleted, resentful, or taken advantage of. Um, saying no and having clear boundaries is actually a spiritual act. It's the most loving, giving, compassionate people. Um, the most giving, loving, compassionate people are those with the clearest boundaries. For when they say yes, they are able to give unconditionally. And that's the thing, if we can't pour from an empty cup, right? So we need to keep our cup full before we can help other people. And then when our cup is overflowing, it's just that much more joyous, that much more enjoyable to be able to help other people because you aren't feeling like you have 10,000 things on your list of things to do and someone else needs your help and you're like, I, I'm helping this person. I want to help this person, but fuck, I have all this stuff to do. That's not enjoyable. So when you truly say yes, it, it, it'll feel really good because you're truly, yes, you truly want to invest that time and energy, which is really cool. Um, when your boundaries are clear, others know where they stand and you're able to give freely if you're not clear where your boundaries lie, this causes confusion, resentment, and energetic cords to be planted. And energetic cords, if you've been around here for a while, that's when you want to do a cord, um, cord cutting meditation, which literally helps cut and dissolve those um, energetic cords between you and other people. Every time we interact with someone else, no matter how it is, we have an energetic connection. So some of those <clears throat> interactions 
can be negative. So you want to cut those and not even the negative ones. Just over time, it can just feel like you're weighed down and weighed down and weighed down. Example, my back. I kept getting breakouts on the, my spine, on my back. And ever since I've been doing a cord cutting meditation and specifically thinking of my back and not just visually what I can see, my front, they've stopped. It's, I don't know, it's, no, I do know, it's energetic. Your energy affects your physical health. It's really, really simple. Um, the best way to gauge with your boundaries is to check in with your belly. Your belly is your second brain. It has an intelligence known as your gut feelings. Tune into the space when deciding what is okay for you. How does it feel? What is, what is it trying to communicate with you? So one of the best rule of thumbs is live in truth. When you're living in truth, living in honesty, um, trusting yourself unconditionally, loving yourself unconditionally, self-love, it'll flow. Everything will just flow. Where in life do you need to establish better boundaries? Think of yourself first today with that. All right, so the next one, the crumbling. The crumbling. not alphabetical which makes it interesting okay so the crumbling what are you clinging to so this is also a really good card for moms because many of us cling to a story of what we think needs to happen what we think being a mother is what we think society expects from us first of all put all of that the fuck aside because you are different your child is different. Your other child is different. Your family is different. No two people are the same. No families are the same. What works for you may not work for someone else. And what works for someone else may not work for you. That's cool. So that's a really good first. What are you clinging to? The crumbling? Figure out what works for you. Let go of any other expectations. Let that crumble away. We have been led to believe that, you know, this should happen, then this should happen, then this should happen, then this should happen. Let her go. There's a shift happening right now where anything in inauthentic can no longer survive. <laughs> exactly what I was Just if you live in truth, <clears throat> live in truth, you're honest ethical, treat people with respect. You know, it just, life flows because it's true. If you're inauthentic, it's just, it's heavy. It's gross. It's no relationships, jobs, social structures, anything built on shaky ground is destined to crumble down. It's happening to bring you back home to who you truly are, both individually and to society as a whole. So you can live a life <clears throat> that is in alignment with who you truly are. When you're in the thick of it, it can feel like a personal attack from the universe. Have faith because the difficult times will be your defining moments. You will be reborn in the fire. You are being called to surrender. If you have anything to do today, take 15, 20 minutes. Literally just lay on your bed, lay on the floor and just surrender. Just surrender. Put everything aside for that time and just let your mind get quiet. And just breathe. And see what comes up. Allow yourself to feel, to heal. If anything comes up, that's hard. Because it might, it probably will, but that's okay. Let it come up. A lot of boundaries before were um, a lot of people 
didn't like to talk about their feelings, didn't like to talk about health. I realized that back many years ago when we were dealing with our infertility journey. It was not something that was regularly talked about and not something a lot of people were comfortable talking about. But it was something I just couldn't hold in. Why? Why hold it in? The more you hold it in, the more pain. Because you keep pushing it down and pushing it down and pushing it down. So, surrender. Surrender. And anything that needs to come up, let it come up and let it heal. Feel the heal. Honestly, it's, it's stop trying to hold it all together to loosen your grip, to let the crumbling occur. It may be difficult at first, but in the end, the sooner you let go, the sooner the rebirthing will occur. What are you trying to hold together? Let go of the control. Let go of thinking you need to be perfect. Let go of this perfect image. Whatever that perfect image is, whoever put that in your mind, just let it all go. Let it all go. Surrender and get into the true flow of life. Because the more we try to control, the more we try to control situations, the more we try to control other people, it's redirecting the timelines, which that's not... We, we want to be in the flow of life, okay? Which things, you know, naturally happen. That's when, that's when it feels like there's so much time because everything is literally just going with the flow. When we try to control time, that's when we hit roadblocks. That's when we feel frustrated. That's when it's tense and gross and just heavy feeling. When you feel like that, if there's, if you're dealing with a lot of tension, if you're dealing with a lot of what the fuck moments, that's a, that's like one of the best examples. <clears throat> if you're dealing with that over and over and over again, surrender, surrender and ask yourself, why, what am I resisting? What am I trying to control? And why am I trying to do this? Life isn't meant to be difficult. Life isn't meant to be challenging. We're not meant to live in hate. We're meant to live in love. So let it crumble and surrender. Surrender. Truly. You have what it takes to allow what is falling away to tumble and fall. Once the tower has crumbled, you will be able to build your home on solid ground with mighty foundations and a view that is so magnificent that it will take your breath away. So working with your light, <clears throat> what are you clinging to for fear of nothing coming to take its place? So look at the things that you're trying to control in your life. If you're a mom, your kids, your house, perhaps your spouse. Look at those things that are first close to you and then start moving out. And ask yourself why. Oh, those are good messages. All right. Next one. Numerology. Full moon in Virgo. These are good messages for the mamas today. 78. Which this even, even before looking at the card, you are good enough. Again, the expectations. Drop them. You do not need. The problem with expectations is if I have expectations for someone else and they don't meet that expectation, which is an expectation that's un completely unknown to them, that's just going to cause frustration for me and could potentially cause tension between me and the other person with them having no idea what is even happening or why. So drop the expectations. It's, it's something that so easily can shift us out of the flow and into just blah, <laughs> really. <laughs> so drop the expectations, truly. 
Um, especially if you're a mom, you're not expected to do everything. You're not at all. It's true. It does take a village. Yes. Obviously being a mom, like the baby grows in our bellies. Dads don't have the babies. We do. So yes, we have, you know, next level connection with our children, which is amazing. But they're not forever a part of us. They are their own individual people. And that's one thing that I think a lot of moms need to know is each of our children have their own little journeys. And yes, we help, you know, guide them and direct into the, you know, the flow. But what we think of, um, okay, myself, for example, I love photography. I love um, my oils. I love these cards. I love anything spiritual. Does that mean my children have to like every single thing I do? No. They each have their own individual uniqueness because they're on their own path. They're each their own individual people, right? Who, yeah, they have their own little destinies too. And it's Dr. Um, Shafali. I don't know if I have the book, Conscious Parenting or the Conscious, I think it's the Conscious Parent. Anyway, Dr. Shafali, she is incredible. She's got so many awesome um, short little videos on YouTube. Awesome. She's just so down to earth and so realistic about being a parent and dropping that. You know, your, your child is their own unique person. And I think that's one thing as moms, we put it on ourselves that it's like, oh, we have to, you know, we have to be perfect and our kid has to be perfect. And God forbid they have a meltdown in the store. Like I was in the grocery store the other day and this mom had two toddlers. One was sitting in the grocery cart at the top and that little guy kept taking his boot off and throwing it down and she'd pick it up and then he'd take it off and throw it and then she'd pick it up. And I was watching and, and just kind of giggling to myself like, oh, you know, like having teens, it's, you miss some of those moments. Like obviously when you're in the moment, it's like, the fuck is happening? They won't listen. They, you know, but then there was me standing there and, and she looks over and she was like, you know, they tell me I'm going to miss this. And I said to her, I have two teens. You will, you will one day miss this. Would I want to go back? <laughs> You know, in, oh goodness, it is, it's, every level of parenting is a new level and it's, I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful. <clears throat> I'm so grateful for our kids because at one point I had so much fear that it wasn't going to happen. And I'm truly, truly grateful for our kids. It's, uh, every stage. Yeah. Okay. You're good enough. So that kind of went off on a tangent, but yeah, it's time to be really honest with yourself and understand what's led you to ask this question. Have you been humble to the point of being self-effacing? Humility is good, but it can only go so far. And drawing this card suggests you may be underrating yourself. You don't have to be flash, just quietly, quietly certain that you are good enough. And that's, that's the gist of this card. You are good enough. It doesn't matter what Sally does over there. It doesn't matter what Karen does over here. That does not matter. Each of us is individual, unique, and each of us is enough. That is the best message. That is the best message on this day. Okay, last ones. So big picture thinking. These ones are in alphabetical order, thankfully. So these are such pretty cards. All right. Ladies energy, visionary, inspired ideas. 
The Palladians are our cosmic cousins. They're here to remind us that it's never too late to learn new things and change the future. You're being called to be a visionary to the, for the planet, to take a breath, to shake off what you've been taught about the world and hold a new vision for humanity. Isn't that a great card at the end of these messages? Goodbye expectations. Goodbye what society thinks needs to happen. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And we fall into our own flow of what makes sense for us and what makes sense for you. It's a beautiful flow. It really is. You're likely a natural big picture thinker here to generate ideas for the future here to birth a new age and dream a new world into being. <laughs> well, yes, I got oils all over my house. I got Oracle cards all over my house. Sage crystals. Yes, I would. Yes. We are bringing in a new world. Um, by those with enough courage to question the way things have been and envision new possibilities for the planet. The world needs more artists, dreamers, inventors, and visionary thinkers. Perhaps you've had an idea recently that you're being called to usher in. If so, this card is your confirmation that it is divinely guided. Uh, so journal prompts. How are you being called to step up and lead? What new ideas or creations are you being called to pursue? And then the other one, deep cellular healing. which honestly okay before I read deep cellular healing it really and truly goes back to when we feel we heal so if we experience something and say if we were a little kid it was just shake it off you're fine you know stop crying you don't need to cry about that whatever actually not whatever because it's it's comments like that that unfortunately make little children think it's not okay to cry it's not okay to feel our feelings it's not okay to show our feelings and it is so important it is so very important i'm probably lucky that i am very sensitive and my children have seen me cry many of times i don't hide that from them obviously child appropriate depending on reason for crying um it's so important to feel to heal and deep cellular healing the more we don't feel things the more we just push it down and don't deal with it the deeper it goes and it truly does cause physical pain it truly does i've been releasing emotions from that I'm realizing got trapped after my husband's accident, which is a really, it was a really traumatic accident for both of us emotionally, him very much physically, and then it began affecting me physically. So deep, deep cellular healing is very important to get to the root cause. <clears throat> so for example, if, if you feel triggered by something, there's a reason. So when you feel triggered, don't lean into getting pissed off about whatever the trigger is. You probably will start going that direction. You will start like, what the fuck? And start going down that direction. Pull yourself back from getting going down the negative train tracks. Pull yourself back and ask why. What about this? What about... What about your situation that you were just in that that thought came into your head? Is there a connection there? Yes or no. When that thought drops into your head, okay, what is the thought? Acknowledge it. Why is it pissing you off? What can you do about it? My best, best, best example or best, um, I don't know. Grab your journal and a pen and just start writing. If you have that opportunity, if you're at work, open a word document and just start typing. 
Why is this triggering me? Why is, and write it out, whatever it is, why is blah, 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 triggering me? And just start writing or typing, whatever it is. It is incredible. The more you get connected within yourself, you can begin clearing those triggers very, very quickly. So something that, you know, 10 years ago might have just lit you the fuck up. It suddenly won't. There will be no power because here's what you want to remember. We're doing the deep healing for ourself. Okay. Because those triggers, and if it's a person that's triggering you, they are not feeling what you're feeling. They are not feeling what you're feeling. You are feeling that. You are feeling that discomfort. Probably most of us here. But then physically you will feel it. You are feeling that. You are being in pain. And that other person could probably care less. And if they do care less, they don't need to be a part of your life, right? <laughs> so it's a good reminder, a good life lesson. All right, so let's read about the card now. Um, so, Octorius energy, physical and emotional healing. Your body knows how to heal. Healing is your natural state. Physical and emotional disharmony can be a reflection of how the world, inner and outer, has been out of alignment. If you are suffering from a mystery or chronic illness, don't allow yourself to think you've done something wrong. Excuse me. Today it's difficult to navigate our health. If this card has made its way to you, you're being called to focus on your healing in practical ways, to prioritize your health, to be kind and tender to your miraculous body, to give yourself the grounding and care you need. Mm, tying in the self-care as well. Oh, these cards all align. <laughs> um, to nourish yourself as you would a newborn baby, to treat yourself with tender care, you may be called to switch things up with your body or your emotional well-being. To call in a team of helpers to support you in navigating any challenges that you may be experiencing emotionally. So put your hand on your heart. I take back my vitality and energy and feel more and more healthy each and every day. My body knows how to heal. My body knows how to heal. Those are some fabulous messages for Mother's Day. Take a breather. Boundaries. The crumbling. You are good enough. Big picture thinking and deep cellular healing. I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous day.